welcome everyone to the first broadcast of Philippines After Dark. This is a new podcast designed to bring interesting discussions and adult content, not X-rated, but adult discussion about the Philippines and what's going on. Michelle, introduce yourself. Well, hello, everyone. Um, yes, I'm Michelle. Thank you, Charles, for having me on. Um, so what, where shall I start? Um, so I, <laughs> I am a Filipino. I have, I'm 100% Filipino. I was born in Laguna, uh, Manila. Um, I then, when I was three years old, I have moved to Australia and, um, and yeah, lived my life in there, up in Australia. And uh, about a year and a half ago, I, um, my mother and I uh, decided to come back here and, uh, and uh, live, live for good. My mother is also, my mother um, is now retired and um, yeah, she decided to come here and live her retirement life. Okay, Michelle, you're next. What's the question? Sorry. What did you ask? Um, oh, come on. Come on. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. No, I'm listening. I'm listening. Okay. Okay. What's going on with you in your life right now? Well, well, I am on a bit of a journey at the moment. Um, about uh, a couple of weeks ago, unfortunately, uh, my work online had not worked out. So, um, so therefore, I am <laughs> not employed at the moment, um, but I am going through a journey of spirituality, of finding myself and thinking what to do um, in the next stage of my life. Um, the, this journey in the last couple, couple of weeks have really, um, I'm looking at it as, you know, one door shuts, another door opens. That's how I'm looking at it. And I believe that something's great's going to happen. It will. A positive Lovely. attitude. Yeah. Even though some, some surprises. Yes. You know, because when I ran into Michelle over <laughs> at uh, the snack bar area, when I met her a few weeks ago, I was looking and I said, okay, God, what are you up to? <laughs> you know, you brought this, this person, you know, it's like, I hear this Australian accent and I look and I see a Filipino. It's like <laughs> the brain is like, ah, what? <laughs> what? Slightly confused. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a confusing thing. So I said, I got to find I out. Get that along. <laughs> it's like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Yeah. It's a pretty strong accent. Absolutely. It sure is. <laughs> Have you ever had a Filipino accent? No. No, I don't uh, think so. Um, my mother, she's kept her Filipino accent, but obviously she has the Australian accent in there. But yeah, I can hear that Filipino accent still with her. And um, she still knows Tagalog, um, mm -hmm. but not as fluently. But yeah, yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> okay, not a problem. So, but, but, but uh, what... I really want to, is somebody on here? Um, talk about is, Michelle, when I first met you in, and I just recognized mm -hmm. that your mother has taught you a lot about Filipino and Filipino women. Yes, she certainly, certainly has. Um, ooh, number one. In Australia, um, growing up, and uh, she always said to me, be careful, be careful of the Filipino women uh, here in Australia. I said, what? why? Why? Well, because of her experience, her experience, um, she experienced, because my, let me just backtrack a bit. Yeah, because my mum married an Australian, Australian fella, man um his mates also married uh a filipina and obviously brought them back to australia so then um you know my uh, mum and dad 
obviously, you know, mingled with, you know, his mates and the Filipino women. And um, over the years, you know, they started off being, you know, friends, you know, mum being friends with these Filipino women. Uh. <clears throat> um, but at the end, uh, discovered that these Filipino women, Filipino women, um, were uh, backstabbing. They weren't nice at all. They weren't nice to mum. They weren't nice to their husbands. Um, these Filipino Back women. Backstabbing? What do you mean? Well, just, you know, just maybe not backstabbing, but she feels that she couldn't trust these women, you know, couldn't, okay. couldn't, couldn't, um, confine in them, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't build up, a, you know, that friendship, you know, that general uh -huh. friendship with them. So, um, so then these Filipino women had married, had married my, um, dad's mates. Unfortunately, they turned on their husband. <laughs> they, they did what? They turned on, on their husbands. They, um, you know, all, you know, they've been together, you know, X amount of, you know, probably 10, 10 years maybe, had children with them. And then they decided to leave them, leave the husbands and take them to, uh, well, divorce them and take every bit what they have, meaning their assets, um, their money, uh, yeah, their house, their businesses, everything. That's, that's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, telling 100% uh, uh, truth here. Uh, uh, Absolutely. Uh, 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 speechless, where you are speechless because it's like, I didn't expect it. Okay. So, um, do, do you understand why they did it? Oh, no idea, really. Um, I have no idea. I've never really thought about it, actually. <laughs> um, no, no idea. I don't know. It was just awful. Awful women. Awful. Really? So, do, you, do you think going back to Australia had something to do with it? Actually, maybe, maybe, you know, having to, um, yeah, going to a place, you know, it's more, obviously more modern, more westernized. Maybe they turned into, what do you call it? Uh, I don't know. What's that word? Um, maybe they become westernized and, and modernized, these women. Oh, wow. Yeah. So let me just say, so let me just think. So three, three out of my three mates, three, um, what am I trying to say? My dad's mates, three of them, who married a Filipina, only one had stayed with their husband. That's, um, yeah, two had left their husband. So... Do you know what the husbands did? You got any feedback on them? No, no, I don't think I did. I can't recall. No, I, I believe they, you know, they were good husbands. They provided for the women. They, you know, they, you know, they established their business or they had gone out to work and provide for the family. Okay. Um, like I've, I, I never really hang around with a group of Filipino women um, due to the fact of what mum told me or warned me of. Um, she just said, just be careful. Don't, yeah, be careful who you come across uh, trust uh, with these Filipino women. However, I just had um, befriended one Filipino woman, woman, um, so, you know, we went out, we, you know, went to coffee, went shopping, went to each other's house. Um, and then just one day she just stopped wanting to hang up with, hang out with me and stopped calling me for no reason. I didn't understand. I mean, um, so what have you been your, your experiences since you've been back? I have, um, I really only have this one Filipina friend that I um, sort of confined in and trust. Um, she's been really good to me and my mother and really helpful. Overall, generally, uh, Filipino women here, um, you know, I say hello to them and they say hi back. Um, 
So that's about it. We don't really go into any other conversations. I don't, I don't know whether it's a language barrier or I don't, I don't know. I don't know why. And if I like to, you know, um, become friends with other Filipino women here, of course. Huh. So you don't trust them, basically. I mean, I didn't say I didn't trust them. I mean, I just just wanted. I just. I don't know. Your last relationship was with a. Filipino with in, Filipino, in Australia. But no, the one you had one Filipino that you trust. Yes. Sorta. Dearly. Who is it? Somebody here, Australia, what? Here in the in the in the Philippines, um, who owns a business um, in uh, what's the place? Marigondon. Yes. Um, yeah, she's been great. I, you know, I feel that our friendship is genuine and honest. Um, yeah, I, I love it to be. It's just so dear far. friend. <laughs> so far, you never know. So Tread Michelle. carefully, probably. <laughs> yeah. Mm hmm. You and I have been doing some discover self discovery work. We sure have, yes, definitely. Yeah. Would you like yep. to discuss that? Because I'm finding here in the Philippines and in America too that that people that haven't gone through that process of of looking at their emotional wounding <sighs> and things like that. Um, drastically affects the quality of their life and their relationships. Now, what, how much do you want to say? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, I've been going on this, what do you call it? Emotional journey, trying to find myself. What's my calling? What am I supposed to do? What's the purpose of my life? What, what's my goals? What am I trying to do here? What am I doing here? Why am I here? <laughs> um, what do I want to do next for myself? And since I've met Charles um, and we've, you know, we've sort of, uh, you know, talked and, and I, and I, you know, told him what's going on with me and he's been great. He's been giving this wonderful advice. I really, my eyes have really opened up and start seeing yeah, it's just start seeing, you know, why I'm feeling like this, um, how to do, maybe uh, trying to figure out how to deal with, with what I'm feeling, what I'm going through. Yeah, it's, it's a journey. I don't know what else to say. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay, you glossed over it. What have you found? What have I found? You want me to start this off? Yes, please. All right. All right. During my journey. All right, I discovered the emotional, what we call the fractured personality from uh, my relationship, my lack of a relationship with my mother. Because of her death at the age of four, I lacked the emotional validation that I would get from a mother. And it also, means I didn't know how to recognize the pattern of love. It's a feeling that we get from our parents and we pat we follow that pattern. Mm -hmm. If you do not have that pattern, in my experience, it's like you're looking for a needle in a haystack and don't know what a needle looks like. Yes. It's messed up. It's messed up. It really is. Yeah, um, like I'm at the I'm at the stage where I am trying to figure out why am I like this? What you know? I'm trying to go back to all the events that happened in my past. Why am mm -hmm. I feeling insecure? Mm -hmm. <laughs> why am I feeling less? Why am I feeling not confident? Or why do I have um um why do I not really believe in myself? I can do what I want to do. And, and do goals, but I want to reach. You know what I mean. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm at the stage where I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I'm trying to dig up. Why am I like this? You know, that's you where I'm at know. at the moment. You already know. I mean, do I pinpoint it on a certain event that had happened to happen to me in the past or I, my upbringing? You glossed know. over it. So this is one of the things that the God principles, the channel, we cover things such as red flags, things that have happened to people that may make them emotionally unavailable. They may suffer from traumatic stress from things. And in my experience, what I'm seeing is that because, you know, my interest is was trying to sort through this and find a emotionally available Filipina, I'm running into a lot of this brokenness instead. It's 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 so far um I met a woman, she's a yaya. Her first husband was a drug addict. She has six children. And the last one she had, uh, she had it from an expat two years ago. And when he tried to, you know, when you have a baby here, you have to register the parents. He didn't have the proper identification to sign and indicate he was the father. Oh, my. Oh, damn. Oh, really now? Oh, my. So you, you told me some things, but I can't bring that out. This is, if you want to bring that out, you have to do that. Mm-hmm. Told you many things. <laughs> I know. Huh? Uh, yes, I've told you many things. I know. Um, this is in the interest of not only helping others, it helps you. Yes. The more you talk about these things, the more you heal. It's Correct. not optional. I'm sorry. Correct. When I oh, first doing... started talking to this, I used to talk in tears when I first started. Yes. It was it was so it was but on the one hand, um I was talking about some emotional pain, but I was also talking about some emotional joy because I found a solution to something that I had had. I always wondered what impact the death of my mom had on my life. I think I lost you there, Charles. Okay. I, I always wondered what the impact was of my mother's death on my life from four. I always felt something was wrong. All right. I've even gone through therapy and they said, yeah, you are impacted. But the therapist said, all we can do is teach you to live with it. Oh. I, I said, okay. I don't just live with it, just not. Yeah, okay, right. So go ahead. So just to live with it and not to um, properly properly d- deal, deal with it, I would say. Not to properly. They don't know how. Yeah, right. Oh, my. They don't know how. So you talk, you're talking to people who are school trained therapists. Okay? Mm. The only people that could help you is someone that has been through that situation and somebody helped them through it. But the pattern is, is somebody that has found a way out of that situation. That's why I know so much because I can look at you and say, yep, I can see it. Mm-hmm. That's why I said, "What's the relationship with your father?" Remember, I, I zeroed. Up. I zeroed in on that. Like, <laughs> because I. So, what's the relationship with your father? Okay, for those who are wondering, <laughs> if you don't want to talk about it, don't. No, I'm fine to a certain degree, maybe. See, I'm just seeing how I how this plays out. Anyways. So those who's wondering, is she really 100% Filipina? <laughs> I am. I am. I, 
Okay, so my mom had me really young, um, really young, 16. Um, you know, dated this policeman, Filipino policeman, and, and obviously, you know, she felt pregnant. Um, what was, was I going with this? Yes, yeah, so my biological father is Filipino, 100%. Um, unfortunately, once mum had me, uh, he wasn't around at all much. Mm, you know, as, yeah, he wasn't around. He kind of, it was just mum bring me, it was just mum, really. Okay. Yeah. Mum tells me that, um, you know, we did see him a couple of times. Go just, ahead. This one story, this one story that mum told me that we had gone over there to see um, my biological father uh -huh. and apparently he didn't want to see me that day at all. Say that again. So we had gone over to visit um, my biological father and apparently he didn't really want to see me. He didn't want to see me. Whoa. I think he just wanted to sleep. I think, yeah, he didn't want to see me. He wasn't interested to see me. Okay. How did that make you feel? Um, upset. Thinking, why? You know, I was only, I was only like probably one year old, two year old. I, I don't, obviously, I don't remember it. You know, mum had told me all this. How old were you? Um, probably was two years old. Maybe one, two years old. What was my last text to you? Right about it. Before that. Oh, <laughs> I turned off my phone. I have the worst short. I have, my memory is terrible. You know, being 40, <laughs> my memory is not getting any better <laughs> at all. <laughs> Three or four years old. Oh. Would you turn your phone back on? <laughs> yes, I remember now. <laughs> I can recall that. I said, no, I was 15. <laughs> that was when but, you rebelled. Yes, I did. But I said. <laughs> yes, three or four years old. Wow. You see, I'm telling the story about this, about uh, my biological father and the fact that he didn't want to see me that day. I've never really dealt with that really. I didn't, I never really, because when my mom told me, I'm like, oh, really? Oh, why? You know, I'm thinking, why? Why does he not want to see me? You know, so that, yeah, really looking back on it and talking about it now has really, I think has really, yeah, it upsets me. It makes me sad. Your own father doesn't want to see you. Anyway, yes. Okay, how do you, all right. <laughs> yes. We'll move on. I don't want to okay. push that. I don't want to put, no, we don't have to push that. It's just really important that I want people to understand that watch this. Mm -hmm. Get more out of it than just living in the Philippines. Correct. You see what Correct. I'm saying? I'm saying because your your situation is not unique. Okay. All right. And so what you have to do, like the solution is, the solution is. Mm -hmm. Are you, sorry, was that a question to me? Sorry. Yeah. Oh. What, the, what, what, what solution would you, what would you do? To overcome these, these emotional feelings and everything? Is that what yeah. you mean? I don't know. Seek help, seek therapy, you know. Um, yeah. What do you think this is? It is therapy, of course. I mean, I, I, I just want to, yeah, William dropped off, cool. Uh, um, I would just want you, to, first of all, you got to look at it and in the Buddhist tradition, they call this karma. See, see, in the Buddhist tradition, we, we say karma is whatever you planted in your life. Currently, 
You're going to read that. That is true. Okay. Mm -hmm. However, we're talking about spirituality. Mm -hmm. In the Buddhist tradition, the karma is things planted in you that you don't know are there. And you will live right. that out. Interesting. Wow. Mm hmm. Well, now you see mean. why I got that. You see why I got them Buddhas over there, right? <laughs> it's yeah. like okay, you know. And then the solution, though, mm -hmm. the, you know, there there are solutions, and I'll I'll give you some suggestions later. I could do it now, but I don't want to do it on the video. Um, how I got over this, you see okay. what I'm saying? Part of this. I couldn't do this by myself. You know, I've tried church. I've tried therapy. I've tried drugs. I've tried suicide. I've tried a lot of different ways until I come into a solution. And we have been talking 45 minutes. Mm -hmm. And there are actually three people watching us right now. Whoever you oh, all are. Hello, you know, everyone. Hope, Thanks for joining I, I us. Hopefully, you know, you're getting a lot out of this conversation. It's raw and, and it's real. I see Jet Power 1960. He's still there. Thank you. We turned off William and he dropped off yeah, because once I muted him, there was something on his end he was doing. We don't know what it mm. is. Mm. Um, getting feedback here. Yeah, echoing. Um, Jet, are you getting anything out of this conversation? We'd like to know. Because mm -hmm. this is Filipino After Dark. Yes. And what I want to do is, <clears throat> I know a lot of men come over here wanting to be with a beautiful Filipina, and they are. They are. But, but you I agree have with to, that. You have to know how to navigate these issues, and some of them are too broken and if you listen to what she just said because i was shocked that you said that michelle I, i'm not kidding you. i am not kidding you that you said that you knew some men australian men that married filipinas took yes. them back to australia yes and, and children after, <clears throat> repeat that story one more time i'm a, i i it takes my breath away. I say that's that is cold. Yeah, that is cold blooded to do that. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, so um, yeah. So my my stepdad, uh, who's Australian man, um, you know, his mates also married a Filipina. Obviously, had gone over to the Philippines, travelled around, met these beautiful Filipino women, young, gorgeous, um, and then they, you know, obviously went to the next stage and married them and had brought them back over to Australia. Um, you know, uh, they had children, and these men, um, for I know, is um, you know, they got, you know, they've. They, provided for them for the family for her and the family you know worked and had their own businesses um you know they had children together and um at the end uh the filipino wife's just gone and, and just decided to leave them to divorce him so did you Take ever see the filipino wives again see what their lives were like no, not never seen them, but I just heard stories uh, like they remarried again, stuff like that. Come on with it, spill it, spill it. They I didn't hear it. much. Yeah, I just didn't really hear. All I knew that you know they'd gone off and you know maybe met other other men or had remarried or trying to trying to take more money out of them. Yes. Out of them, who? Men trying to take more money at, at, at other men they've they, met. They, found, they were looking for other victims? Maybe, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Where do you think that comes from? Oh, I don't know. It's awful. I, I really don't know. Why? Why do they do that? I don't know. Is it maybe because 
unfortunately, because the way they have lived here in the Philippines, the, up, the upbringing, you know, having not much around them when they're growing up. And then, you know, they finally got this opportunity to live in a westernised world. You know, it was, uh, it's all modern and there's, um, you know, they married a, um, a wealthy man and get everything oh, they were given wealthy to them. too? Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Well, not rich, you know. Um, develop, there were, you know, builders, developers, um, uh -huh. you know, had those small businesses. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hmm. So, hmm. so where are you at now with all this? Where am I? Where am I at with all this? I don't know why they. Yeah, it's really talk, really talking about this. I really don't know why. Why do they do that? Well, no, we we can leave them alone. That's that's morals and values. Okay. That's morals, values, from what I've been able to learn that that could even be a resent that could be a resentment and they could be taking it out on men because mm. they were broken from their father. That's how deep mm. that runs. Wow. Right. Wow. And then there are some other things that talked about self worth, self hate. It's a whole lot going on there, Michelle. That's a whole lot. I, I've, I've, why would a person smoke cigarettes? Um, when they know it's bad. Yeah. yeah. It's right there on the set. This... Oh, you dropped it. Yeah. yeah. I you cannot yeah. say, you cannot say not, that yeah. you are emotionally and mentally healthy doing that. That doesn't make, make sense. <laughs> no. Right. So, Michelle... We have 52 minutes. Is there anything you want to tell people before we end this, com end, at least end the live stream? We'll stay online a until it finished unloading. Anything you want to tell people? Look, I just want to say, um, you know, it's, uh, you know, this is not a lie. It, it, this, is, this is the truth. Unfortunately, this is the truth about these Filipino women, unfortunately. Um, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to build a bad, I don't want to, um, what do you call it? <laughs> um, oh, I can't think, I can't think, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't want men thinking, you know, oh my gosh, that's awful. You know, um, are these Filipino women are the same like that over there in the Philippines? Uh, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, this, this, this is not unique to the philippines mm, mm, mm. all right it's just that they're not all like that right they're not all like that no i don't want to say they're all like that no mm. they're not all like that some of them recognize that they shouldn't um victimize men mm -mm. and they don't mm. um but so far um i've been taken twice and I wasn't, it was this, this was just being who I am, you know, helping people, yeah. that kind of stuff. And I've had to stop doing that. Been taken advantage of. Yeah. You know, lend somebody some money and it's like, well, you're not getting that back. Money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Talking about money. Talking about giving me money. Yeah. All right. Why? Is that, that. Where does that come from? Let me tell you a story. <laughs> So good, good, good. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> you got me, Charles. <laughs> nah, all good. Okay, so um, a few years back, well, a year before COVID hit, um, I found my biological father, right? Um, and decided to go over to the Philippines. Um, that would have been my first time ever returning back to the Philippines, by the way, after all the years living in Australia. Anyway. I converted. Um, so I met my biological father. I met my half brothers and sisters. Um, so then, um, when I returned back, when I, you know, returned to Australia, you know, obviously we kept chatting on Messenger. Um, uh -huh. This is when. This is when they just kept asking for money. 
but I just, I just, I just like give me, um, you know, Ate, Ate, uh, sister, sister, can you give me some money for my farm, or can you give me some money to so I can buy a sack of rice, or can you give me some money? Um, you know, my child's sick, or you know, I was happy to help my fa- my biological father, um, but you know. Having them asking me money all the time, I mean, did they really want to know their, their half-sister? Did my biological father really want to know me? Yeah, money. Money that you give, but you'll never, you'll never, you'll never um, see it again. And what did we you discover? What did we discover about you? Hmm. What did we discover about me? Last night when you took that psych test. Well, I'm the explorer. Yes. <laughs> the caregiver. Yes. Oh, what was the last one? Oh my God. Why can't I not remember? I saved it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, uh, Very much my memory is awful. The uh, la- it was the last two. It was a combination of the caregiver and uh i forget definitely hold on hold on where's my email i'll turn my phone off so i'm gonna have to open up my window that's okay don't worry i can bring it up i saved it and i wrote it down in my notebook you should have said i will uh here you go mm. all right wrong one uh hold on uh let's see the innocent ah oh, that's it how can i forget that of course yeah that's 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 rare i don't see that too often um, okay the innocent means you're naive mm. and because you haven't experienced this but when combined with the caregiver it becomes people pleasing. People pleaser, um, absolutely. I hundred percent. So yep. now that you know that you can I hear you. <laughs> yes. You can stop doing that now. Now that you know, um, everybody's not nice. We 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 had to learn that because you don't have healthy boundaries because look at where it came from. It came from men, your father. Who else hit you for money? Uh, yeah, it's just my half brother, really. Who else? Um, your father, your half brother. Who else? Just mainly those two, really. And they are men. Right. Do you see the pattern there? I think so. If we're people, why do we people please? I don't, well, <laughs> well, for me, I don't want to upset anyone. I want to, I don't want to rock the boat, you know? I don't want to cause conflict. I want to help people. Um, yeah, I don't want to upset them. That's... You're upset now. Trying to look at this. I wouldn't say upset. Just, yeah, it's, I, I don't know how I feel at the moment, actually. Well, we people please because we want to be loved. Mm. And without that healthy, that healthy pattern. Yeah. All right. We, we have a hard time identifying healthy love and being taken advantage of. It's because our yeah. belief systems, our belief systems tell us we're supposed to be nice. We're supposed to help people and uh-huh. all that BS. Michelle, it's been nice. We're at we're at a whole hour and I gotta eat. Wow. I've got to, yeah, well, hold on. I wanna thank everybody that uh tuned in. Um pass this along. We're gonna, I'm gonna chop this up into uh meaningful segments. I hope to see everybody again. Michelle, stay on the line, please. Okay. Thank you, Charles, for having me. No problem. Being great. Thanks for everyone.